Okay, this video takes you through uh, a structured word inquiry of the word refugee, which was sparked by a question from a grade uh, four teacher at International School of Beijing. Uh, it was just great. And I thought I'd use it as a way to model how uh, we do these kind of investigations. Now, there's two main orthographic knowledge goals in this movie. One is to just model the process of a scientific orthographic inquiry and to really show how it's all based on uh, investigating the structure and meaning connections within and between words. Um, we have structure tests where we use the word sum in the matrix and meaning tests where we often use we use dictionaries with an emphasis on the etymological part. The other purpose of this is to try to help build up the mechanics of teaching that um, we need within structured word inquiry classes. Um, the main thing here is working with word sums. Uh, which is such a cri critical tool. Um, the next, there's a film that follows uh, about using uh, the word sums that we create and test to make a, a matrix, and that is in a separate follow-up film. So we start with the word refugee, and whenever you're investigating any question, uh, this is a helpful set of questions to ask when you're talking about understanding the spelling of any word. We, we need to start with the meaning of it. Now, I hopped early on to the dictionary um, as a, a place to do that, and I found this information. And what I have is that it, it tells me that aside from the first part here, we know someone who's been forced to leave their country, that kind of thing, that the word refuge comes up, and it tells me to, to, to check out that word, which I did. And when we do that, we see, we get back to this Latin root, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, fugere, uh, something like that, for flee. So we have, by investigating the meaning, we've all of a sudden developed a hypothesis of a possible link between refugee and re refuge. And in fact, it the original teacher's question was about how to make a matrix because she wasn't sure how to analyze the structure of refugee. Now we've got a hypothesis. And the hypothesis to be, to be proven, we have to pass two tests, one of structure and one of meaning. Now the structure test the way to do that is with the word sum. That's what is making this so critical. We can't, we need the word sum. So we're hypothesizing the word sum R-E-F-U-G-E plus double E is rewritten as R-E-F-U-G, no E, double E. It works, uh, it works because a vowel suffix like this would replace the E. However, we need to be aware, if we are going to uh, suggest that hypothesis, we are also saying there's a double E suffix. Now, how do we know, and how would anybody know if there really is a double E suffix? Well, there's a few ways you can do it. One is a handy dictionary. Um, if I type in a double E, I see that dash, and I'm already looking like I'm in good shape. It says there is a double E uh, suffix forming nouns, um, and I look through here, and I see some examples of words that employ E. That makes sense. I also went to uh, the word searcher, and I'll jump over there in a little bit again. And I, I found a bunch of other words with a final double E that made sense structurally. So uh, like refugee, this one, mortgagee, someone who uh, is taking on a mortgage, also replaces the single silent T. And these other words, all related in, in structure and meaning, always work added to the end of these. So we now have some pretty good evidence that the structure connection between refugee and refuge um, are established. So that means we need to look at the meaning. Um, now the meaning, I hopped over to my dictionary and we already did that and we saw this, they drew the link in the first place to refuge and this uh, underlying Latin root for to flee. So we actually already have, a, have, have done this, our, our hypothesis was uh, passed the structure test, links wor words linked by a coherent word sum, and the meaning test. The etymological evidence shows both evolved from the same origin, the Latin root for flea. All right, but we need to be scientists. We've, we have found um, something that is a plausible base, but is it really a base or could it be analyzed further? Um, we, we need to be careful with this because we have to always remember that scientists seek the deepest structures that account for the greatest number of cases. If we can go deeper than this, maybe we can, then we will have evidence that this isn't a base, but just a stem. 
And more importantly, if we go deeper, we'll find a, a, a larger number of words related in structure and meaning. Now, if, to look at refuge, the first thing that jumps out at me is that I do know that re is a possible prefix. Hmm. So if that's the case, what would happen? Well, again, the word sum is my tool. If I have an re prefix, I am saying there must be a F-U-G-E base, which is possible um, because there are such things, I don't know a word, F-U-G-E, um, but uh, it could be a bound base. Um, so how can I test that? Well, one good way to do that is to go to uh, a great site called The Word Searcher. I'm going to go over here. And what I've done here is I've typed in F-U-G. Uh, I didn't mean to have that already done there. F-U-G. And the reason I didn't type an E there is because I want to make sure that I don't miss words that have take on a vowel suffix that replace an E. So first I try that, and I got these 15 words, which I have pasted into here already. Um, that shows you how easy a teacher can just copy words from that tool. So now we do the structure and meaning test against these words to see which of these are actually related to our hypothetical base F-U-G-E. Well, I do not know what an F-U-G is. I have never seen a FUG. Um, so I went over here, F-U-G, and I look over here and I see a warm, stuffy, or smoky atmosphere in a room. Okay, and there's the word fuggy. It doesn't seem to have any uh, meaning relation, and it can't have a structure relation because there's no E there. So I knew structurally that it couldn't be linked, but, you know, these things are interesting. What What is a fug? And kids love checking that stuff out, so it's just a, a useful thing. But I know I can't be related because the word sum wouldn't work. Um, now, the next words here are interesting. Fugue, and it's plural fugues. I also know these can't be morphologically related because that U can't exist, as far as I can see, with the F-U-G-E base. Uh, I can't see how uh, that structure would work, but I was curious about this one, so I went to my dictionary there, F-U-G-U-E, and here I found something interesting. It's a music, that musical competition uh, composition idea, and it goes back to that same root. So we actually do have a meaning connection, but we don't have a structural connection because we couldn't make a word sum where you had F-U-G-E at this base unless you were trying to say there's a U-E suffix, and we just haven't got evidence of that. So I get to eliminate those first four words from possibility, and I've worked through these ones previously, and they all seem to work. Um, so let's go through the evidence of some of these instead of all at once. Refugee we already did with R-E plus F-U-G-E plus double E, vowel suffix replaces single silent T, is rewritten as R-E, F-U-G, no E, double E. So that structure and meaning test worked. Now we go to fugitive. This one has is useful to note that this I-T might have thrown some people, but it's just an I-T-E suffix with a vowel suffix replacing the single silent T. So we get the F-U-G, no E, I-T, no E, I-V-E. Uh, structure and meaning working. And now we got to centrifuge, which is a, a word I hadn't considered, but the word searcher found for me. And this one has the added uh, dimension of a uh, connecting vowel letter that's so valuable to know about because it makes it helps us see this the link here. And it also helps us see we have this uh, the base word we know is center with the vowel suffix, uh, not the vowel suffix, the connecting vowel letter replacing the single silent T. Good thing to know. Connecting vowel letters do replace single silent T's, but they don't cause doubling like vowel suffixes can. And my friend F-U-G-E. And we should check the meaning, though. Um, how do I know this really works? Well, again, I'm going to go to my dictionary and type in the word centrifuge. But it didn't help me out. It didn't give me any origin. So then I went over to uh, another favorite site and sent the online etymology dic dictionary. And I typed in centrifuge, centrifuge, and it, it didn't give me a lot of help, but it told me to go to centrifugal. Um, and here we see our old friend, that Latin root, F-U-G-E-R-E, -E, for to flee. And we also see the center link. So we've really proven structurally and meaning-wise that this is related and deserves sh and should be on the same matrix. All right, and centrifugal. 
centrifugal, centrifugal, which I keep mispronouncing because I forget to <laughs> not be worried by the spelling. So centrifugal is a, another, a great word to be introduced to here. And when we look, if you look up the history of that one, you'll see it too is, is uh, related in meaning. Great conversations for kids with these words. Um, and then subterfuge, um, I also investigated. Um, I'm, for the moment, uh, hypothesizing S-U-B-T-E-R as a prefix. Uh, I, there, I, it's plausible that there could, it could be an S-U-B prefix and a T-E-R base. Um, it's a tempting one. Uh, I found other evidence of S-U-B-T-E-R as a variant of uh, S-U-B. For the moment, I'm going to leave it uh, this way. I'd be curious if people can give me some evidence to prove that it's actually S-U-B plus T-E-R. But for the moment, I don't want to go deeper than I'm confident, confident in, so I leave that as a prefix. And we have now uh, established the structure of all of these words, and this gives me the ability to make uh, to work on the matrix, which comes up in the next film. Now, um, there's an, an important pronunciation question here. With these, when we look at this word refugee and refuge and centrifugal and the other etymologically related word fugue, um, but not morphologically related, we notice that this G grapheme is uh, representing different pronunciations. Well, this is a, a, a good opportunity to study the phonology of G, which came up in a class when I was working in recently, so I developed this little graph, or I guess a chart, and it shows the way you read this, it tells you that the G uh, grapheme represents G. As long, but if it's followed by an E, I, or Y, that G could represent G, but it could also represent J. And that's what we, we see here, that when any an E is following the G, it's able to be J. But if there isn't an E, I, or Y after it, as in centrifugal or fugue, then the G is always going to be represented as G. So um, we've touched on all of those. Um, I really encourage you to, to look at the, uh, the next film where we take uh, all of those word sums and show you how you can make a matrix out of them. Uh, there's lots more to learn at uh, the Word, our WordWorks website, but I also encourage you to go to Real Spellers because this discussion started there. Um, the, the teacher at ISB emailed me the question, and I uh, responded up on the Real Spellers site. And once you go there, you have to sign in, um, and then you can search for refugee and finite, and then you will find this nice discussion uh, from various people, including real spelling. And here's a discussion of uh, the difference between morphology and etymology. But uh, there's lots of stuff to find there. Um, so I hope you find that useful.